The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to show a picture of the program that I'm going to be on Wednesday, October the 9th for Stock Charts, the TV program that they have. If you're interested, you can check in. If you listen to our program, it's going to be a repeat. I'm just going to be talking about the big patterns that I see in the stock market in gold, same stuff that I usually do here. So, but anyway, that's what's going to be going on there. Frankly, folks, I wish I could talk about baseball all this hour because uh, there's so many memories that we have as a, as a family. My daughter, turned, my youngest daughter turned 50 uh, over the weekend. And uh, when I called her to wish her a happy birthday, uh, oh dear, Sarah, Oh, dear. Hold on a second here. Uh, I have to do that afterwards. Let me, um, oh, I really need to answer that phone, but I guess I'm not going to. Let's, uh, anyway, I talked to my daughter, and she was reminding us about how much fun we had as a family uh, with the Dodgers, traveling with them. And uh, we didn't travel with the team. We traveled, you know, to the same cities and stuff. It was really, uh, really something. <laughs> I don't think so, Mark, but you never know. You just never know. Anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there, but uh, we just had so much fun. When Tommy John came to pitch for the Dodgers after he left the White Sox, we had gone to Comiskey Park a lot of times to watch him play, and we were we were very close to the, to the John family. His, his his daughter was older. His uh, his oldest his oldest sister Marilyn was older. She was a singer, and his father worked for the telephone company. And his mother was a housewife, and she was a good friend of my mom. And my mom taught her how to make pasta because they loved eating at my grandmother's restaurant. So she taught him how to do that. And from that, we became friends over the years. And he never changed any at all. I mean, uh, he's just been a pretty nice guy. He's uh, he's uh, three years younger than me. Uh, well, two and a half years younger than me, but uh, he sure helped us when we were at uh, the years at Drexel. And the reason why I'm bringing this all up, there's a story behind this, believe it or not. I'm sitting here Friday in about 10 o'clock in the morning, and I get a call, and on my automatic thing there that tells who's calling, it says Gibson Dunn. Well, I knew what that was. That was Gibson, Dunn & Crutcher. That's the largest law firm, the most prestigious law firm in the Western United States. And uh, I saw the number, and I used to do, I did about 10 or 15 um, uh, expert witness programs with them, and I did, always did a good job. So I thought, oh, maybe you want me to do that. And I think I was out of their program after so many years. But So I called back, and I re got to the secretary and says, we have a – we we want someone wanted to speak one of the uh, one of the managing partners. I mean, this is one of the big guys that has you know 100 partners under him. Wanted to speak to you, and I said sure. So I didn't know who it was. So I get this on, and he comes on, and he says, "You don't remember me," he said, "but I was 10 years old, and my dad worked at Drexel Burnham Lambert, and you got me to see the Dodgers, and I went into the dugout, and we saw Tommy Lasorda and all the guys, and he said, I just wanted to tell you how much that is, and he says my dad is turning 95." And uh, we'd like for you to come over and celebrate his 95th birthday. And I said, wow, that's pretty good. I said, I haven't talked to your dad in about 10 years. He said, well, he still talks about you. And he still sits there and he counts his cougarans that he has from 1976 and 77 that he paid $250 for. Anyway, it was nice. But this kid is now a managing director at Drex at uh, Gibson Dunn and Crutcher. Uh, let me tell you folks, that is one prestigious firm. That's where Ronald Reagan had his account and uh Anyway, it's uh, it was fun to remember some of these things. So that's the good part of this. All right, let's. Uh, I want go back to. Uh, uh, hold on, just a minute. I want to show one picture here because my daughter sent me this. 
because it was something that um, it, it was indigenous to the area where we live there in San Luis Obispo and um, Avila Beach. This these six a series of pictures were the pictures from the 1934-35 depression, folks. These are the most famous of all the ones in the encyclopedia for pictures for that era. There's about a series, about 12 of them. This is the woman and her children and stuff. And, uh, you know, that was basically... Uh, uh, you know, what it was all about. And we were, were talking about that area because those pictures were taken in this little town called Napomo, which is right near San Luis Obispo, which has the greatest steakhouse in the whole world, period, not not negotiable. And uh, it was, uh, we, we talked about those days and also the baseball days and stuff. It was, it, we had so many great memories. I mean, oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the markets just a little bit. Um, what I'm going to be doing on the show for stock charts, I'm just going to be showing you, I'm going to be doing this chart right here. This is one of the main ones I'll be doing, and I'll be talking, uh, yeah, well, this is a picture of history, uh, Maria. That's why there's a whole series of them. You ought to go in and Google it. If you Google, um, you know, the Depression, 1930s, that those pictures will come up. They're part of the... Uh, uh, the, the Getty Images uh, Museum that he bought all that stuff. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about this particular pattern and, you know, what it looks like. And uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about gold. I'm going to go back and show the folks, you know, what happened in a year that people don't remember anymore, which was the dot-com bubble. And there you'll see uh, 2000. Uh, there was the dot-com bubble. And, uh, you know, the market dropped to over 80% uh, during that particular one, whether they'll meet. These are just patterns. You know, sometimes they work. You know, sometimes they don't. But uh, when they do, we're, I've got the other one in here. Where's the other one? Shut the front. Oh, here's the 07. Let's get the 07 one up a little bit here. Here's when Bernanke, if you remember, Bernanke came out in October and said all systems were gold. All the lights were green for the economy. I, if you don't believe it, just go in and Google it yourself and see what he was saying at that particular time. So that was helicopter. Ben. Anyway, I'm going to go over those three charts and take a look at those and see what there's going on. There's one there's one stock, folks, that we will follow here, but don't trade it. It's, it's in pretty pretty serious trouble right now, and we've been talking about it here, and that is the old Bitcoin. Let's get this up here so you can take a quick look at it. You'll see here that we have broken down, and we're still breaking down from what I understand, that it's uh, moving a little lower. That's not really a good picture for the, the cryptocurrencies. That doesn't affect, I don't believe it affects the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, shut the front door, the uh, 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 Blockchain stuff. I just think it affects the other thing. So, let's uh, let's try to remember that. Doesn't mean a whole lot. Now, I, I I focused a lot of what we looked at last week. You know, we had that tremendous short covering rally. Uh, either one or two things was going to happen. It was completing a big ABCD uh, pattern up there, or we were getting ready to. Uh, you know, break out into new high grounds. Now, yesterday or Friday, with all that movement that we had, there was a drop in open interest in the S&P and uh, several of the others. I think the only index that was the small one, which was the Dow Jones. I think it had about a break-even open interest. All the other open interest for the NASDAQ, and especially the, the S&P, had a substantial drop in open interest. So that was short covering. Now, that doesn't mean the new, new, new shorts could be hammered again today, but you just have to, you know, give it a little bit of spec. We'll take it. Take a break here, folks. I'll st try to stop mumbling and get on to the program. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we have a caller from the home of W.D. Gann, West Palm Beach, Florida. Jeff, are you there? I am, Larry. How are you? I'm still above ground, staying away from open graves, my friend. What can I do for you? Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy, I, you know, I haven't heard you for a while, and um, you are you are a true treasure. I love your stories, and um, I know you I, – I think I heard you way back when talk about Dr. Alan Andrews and maybe Roger Babson. Yes, uh-huh, um, sure did. I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, are you a median line guy, or is that just something that I know you – Pretty much, you're doing your own thing. No, I, I look awesome. at, well. I don't look at median lines anymore because it's part of the harmonic stuff of the market going up and down. I basically just look at the ratios, the expansion, and try to find little patterns that line up. You know, the ABCDs line up with the ratios, and you know, it gives you a place to, you know, either be a buyer or seller. You know, the little patterns that we look at: head and shoulders, three drive patterns, Gartley's butterflies. Uh -huh. that's, that's really what I do. I no oscillators or anything like that. You know, Al is a heck of a lot. More more sophisticated uh, with his fractals and things like that than I am because I try to keep it as uh, just as simple as possible. And, and you know, well, there you make it as simple for me. I mean, I'm <laughs> I can understand what you're talking about. It's you, you are really you're well, one of the I, best. You really are. I, you're, well, you're really giving I, back, I, um, <laughs> and I do appreciate it. And I think all the listeners do too. Yeah. Well, that's really nice. Now, we, you know, don't forget, I said I wouldn't send you the twenty dollars till after the show was over. So make sure you give me your address, okay? <laughs> uh, you know what they said? You promised fifty, but that's okay. Don't that's, worry about well, that's, it. That's hey, that's one, one more thing before I let you go. Or before you let me go, can you look at um, uh, October's crude? I'm uh, I'm long, yep. Yep. and um, yep. I hope you're not you long know, from I, 63. I'm, <laughs> I'm long. Um, I'm looking for a, a nice move up to like 55, 56. 
Oh, I think you could get that easily. I posted a chart for crude oil in here, Jeff, and we've got a beautiful, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. beautiful triple bottom in there. Uh, it hit uh -huh. uh, the 61% retracement, which was at uh, 51.25. We got down to uh, 50.95, one, two, three, four times, and now it's uh, it looks like it's on its way. It started a little bit early, uh, lower last night on Sunday, and now it started to move a little bit higher. But I think 55 uh, would that could easily be made. That's just a 3.82 retracement. So uh, the one thing you want to watch is if it pops and you get a quick move to 55 that means it's going to go a lot higher but if it takes two or three days to get there <laughs> it's in big trouble so uh that 55 uh, is, a, is a good uh a good spot to look at and below 51 you don't want to have anything to do with it no i i yeah i, I think I, i'm pretty i'm pretty tight on my uh yeah they, they taught me well two morgan guys taught me well uh, from cme and the uh those boys good i don't know if you remember tim Yes, sure I do. Yes, a very famous person. Oh, you good, good. Hey, is he still alive or what? I haven't seen him down in Miami forever at the golf course. Well, that I don't know. I'm pretty sure he is, though. The last I heard that he was, and I would have heard if he passed away because, uh, you know, I know who he is and stuff, so he hasn't done. I got a list of all the people that are dying. I got more bigger list of dying than the ones who are alive now. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're too funny, Larry. Hey, keep it up, and uh, God bless. God bless. Take care, thank buddy. Thank you very much, Jeff, and thank you for the kind words. That makes my day. It really does. I oh, really, really appreciate it. Great. <laughs> You're okay. very welcome. Have a great one. Okay. Month. You bet. Let's take a quick look here. We had Mike from up in Canada that want us to take a look at the natural gas. And if anybody's qualified to talk about natural gas, it has to be me. Let's take a look at this. You'll see we had that big move up to the 270 area. We had the move down. We really thought it was going to hold at 32 level, and it, it did for about three days. And then, boom, down it came and went down to the 70, 707 area. Uh, we're down a little bit today, but that's a normal we've had a two good uh, two good days up so it should have really good support at uh, 222 and even better support at 216 216 i would really be interested in and look at this look at this very closely folks look at 216 if you go over to the far left into june you'll see that the low in june on june the 20th was 216 if you get if you get it down here in october at 216 you're going to have a perfect head and shoulders pattern at that point now what you'd like to see is you'd like to see two other little patterns uh, on the daily or hourly chart you know uh, also verifying that 216 is a really really important spot because then you have a certain Several factors that tell you that should be uh, really great support, and if it goes below 213, you know you're wrong. So you can trade the natural gas contract; it is the equivalent of the old pork bellies because it moves so much, without risking too much. So uh, the main thing is to watch how we're going to hold these lows. Uh, uh, is natural gas still down on the day today? I it has a little bit of a bullish bias, but I saw that it was down earlier, so I just assumed that it was probably going to be uh, moving a little bit lower. But we haven't I haven't checked it yet or not. But that's what. I'd be watching in the natural gas. I hope that helps, Mike. And uh, I think that it's got a chance in here. But uh, the real key, f the real key level here, is this pass low that we made. If we take that out, we'll be looking at 216. And it, like I mentioned, that would be the head and shoulders pattern from the June low. And that also would be something that would be, uh, you know, very, very important. So we want to watch that as we go through. Another one that looks, uh, you know, looks real interesting here that uh, deserves our attention is the soybean contract and let me get this up here just to show you this because we've had a, a 230 yeah it's holding see it's down quite a bit that's uh that's down about six or seven cents from um, that high we made so it needs to hold that let's take a look here you'll see the uh, this is november soybeans you'll notice that uh, we're up in this area of around 2922 that's the 78 percent retracement it's that long-term downtrend line that you can see from march through there and if you did all the work on that, you'll see that we're pretty close to a 135 pattern. If we can get the uh, November beans above 925, then you'll be looking at something that could be uh, could be moving pretty good. Yes, I, I see that it's down uh, quite a bit here, but uh, that was ba if you if you know if you did the short term work on the natural gas, you'll see that when it made that high on Friday, it was a beautiful uh, ABCD pattern on the hourly chart, you know, measuring up to that point. Someone's asked me the question, you know, how do I switch back and forth to these charts? And folks, really, when I when I start looking.
looking at the work that I do, I start with the daily. I quickly look at that, and then I go down to a four-hour chart because on the four-hour chart, I'm, be able, I'm able to see six weeks, but I'm able to see the other small periods, uh, periods, the other small patterns that are there. And then from that, I move down to the hourly, and I you know, see if they're still coming in with the numbers that I'm looking at. And then I move down to a 15-minute. And of course, I don't go any, anything lower than the 15-minute very often, but uh, that tells me you know, the areas that I'm looking at you know, for a spot to uh, either be a buyer or seller. So those are the, the main things that I'm, uh, you know, sort of keeping an eye on as I as I look at some of these things here uh, in the morning. So uh, the one thing, folks, is the gold market uh, is still in a negative zone, I believe. We've had one heck of a rally. And let's just get the gold up here to take a quick look at it. We've got, oh, we've got the break coming up here. No guests today. Uh, hopefully, we'll have Tim Bost on tomorrow. And we've got the wizard himself will be coming on uh, on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, I think we have, uh, no, I think he's on the 10th. I think Norm Winsky will be with us. Uh, he'll, will be with us on the 10th. So we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to uh, look at that. So anyway, let's, uh, let's, uh, talk about gold when we get back from the break. Okay, folks, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you and your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to talk a little bit about the gold market. And I posted the gold chart long-term weekly, and I also posted the silver chart. Silver's acting weaker. As you can still – we have those ABCD patterns still outstanding at 1660. Uh, and I believe we might have a chance to get there. Um, I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see. If we take a look here uh, at the um, – at the gold market. Let me get this up here. Here's a perfect example of me looking at a four-hour chart. Let's just get this up and we'll take, take a look at it. We had the big ABCD went exactly to the number uh, 1465. The low was uh, 14650. We were looking for 1470. Uh, came within, you know, the actual uh, perfect number actually. And then we had a nice rally. We went from 65 all the way up uh, to 25, of course, being $61. Uh, the harmonic number in the gold is 32. Two times 32 is 64, so it's very close. Now what we're doing is we're setting right over the 382 retracement at uh, 1518 right now. The low that we made uh, back here uh, just the other day was, uh, let's just make sure I get this correct in here so we can see it was, uh, oh, wow, we made a slightly lower low. Pay attention to gold right here, folks, because this might have been, this might be a low here because we're right at a 382 retracement here uh, in the gold. Uh, we're down from uh, 26 uh, down to uh, uh, 04, so we're down uh, $22. No help there as far as any harmonic number, but uh, the fact that we took out those lows by a little bit and didn't go anywhere, I would frankly like to see uh, the ABCD structure come down to about 1495 to 1491 and then I would look at it because that's going to be interesting here uh, the folks this this whole system of the gold and silver is based on this head and shoulders pattern that you see here uh, that 14 that 1568 was a big number on the weekly chart as you remember this is a perfectly symmetrical head and shoulders pattern from your left shoulder to the head the head to the right shoulder spot on they were equal equal in price between the the uh, right shoulder at 1547 the right shoulder 1547 comes right down ABCD rallies up almost exactly like the previous rally and now we're in the midst of we're going to find out where we're going to be here in the next uh, next few days because this is going to tell us if we're going to make another ABCD taking us down to 1414. And I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but we're at a critical level setting in here right about now. Whether the gold's going to hold this level or not, you know, remains to be seen. But we will be watching it for sure to see if it uh, if it holds up at this level. So that's the key. Uh, the platinum has uh, had a real interesting pattern. Uh, in fact, it's uh, starting to fail a little bit. Let's just get this up here so you folks can uh, take a quick look at it, and uh, we'll get it up here. And where is the, there's the old platinum. Let's get this up here. You'll notice that we're setting at major support here uh, in the platinum also. And uh, anything below the, uh, in fact, I believe we're below it. I believe we are below it already uh, in the platinum. So that's telling us that support might be might be failing. And platinum is very thin, folks, compared to the you know volume. It's a fraction of what it is in gold. And you know, silver is only one sixth of what the of what the gold is. So you can imagine how how thin the platinum is. And palladium is even worse. But as we mentioned in last week's letter, our good friend Jim Bartolioni from V50 partners. Uh, they, he thought that the high was going to be at 1668 in the um, plati uh, palladium. It got to 1672. So we won't be listening to him anymore, but it's now down about $40 from that level, but uh, pretty much spot on the exact price. So we'll be watching it uh, very, very closely as we go through here. Uh, people have asked me about the short covering rally that occurred on Friday, and it was short covering because the, the open interest dropped during that rally. Uh, folks, those happen for a whole lot of different reasons, and they happen all the time. All you have to do is just go look at an ES, ES chart, and you can see this happening all the time. I mean, that's uh, they have these huge rallies and huge drops. I mean, that's just part of uh, log, log trading and, uh, you know, the other stuff that they do for automatic trading. And, you know, and, and I, I know the Fed's out there doing, doing their thing, but they do it in context with good technical analysis. Folks, all of these charts that we look at here, 
every single one of them. I mean, you could you could just basically look at ABCDs and ratios and proportions, and it's not. It doesn't seem to be very mysterious. At least, uh, you, you know, from my my sense of anyway. All right, we'll take a look here at the notes and bonds as we came in here. Uh, interesting, last night, uh, right on the opening, the notes and bonds actually made a slightly higher high by one tick than we were on Friday. And then, of course, they had a little bit of a sell-off. It's still quite early yet, but that's uh, that's pretty much what was uh, what was happening. And again, I'm going to bring this up because it's important. Again, you're looking at the Treasury bonds now on a daily chart. And again, during these last few days, we've had a drop in open interest. That means that the players are not in the restaurant. So it's going to be hard to feed the bull as, as near as what they say from history. But, you know, history is meant to be repeated. And those that don't repeat it or don't – who was that said? If those that don't read history are bound to repeat it, who was it that said that? That must have been somebody like uh, Will Rogers or Churchill or somebody like that. But I don't remember. I know David, David White would know that. So, David, who said that? If you don't read history, you're bound to repeat it. I, I the old gray matter doesn't uh, lead to this right now, so we'll watch that. Um, we've been asked to take a look at the Australian dollar. I want to bring this up here because uh, we've got a really good pattern here in the Australian dollar, folks. Uh, you'll notice that we have that uh, three bottoms down there. It's a triple bottom, much like we're seeing in crude oil. We had a really nice move off of that 66.80 level. We rallied uh, about, uh, uh, what, 100 and some pips, and now we're backing off a little bit. So watch the back off there in the Australian dollar. And as you get a nice little... Uh, uh, it could have been Donald Duck. <laughs> Might have been Daisy Duck. Who knows? Anyway, let's. Uh, uh, anyway, the Australian dollar does have a chance there if it can hold above that. But again, the U.S. dollar, and that's the one we've been watching with the euro, and the euro's held up relatively well. Uh, the uh, I guess it was somebody named Santa Ana. What well, that's just good. Let me host Santa Ana. That's just right south of L.A. Let's get that U.S. dollar up here so we can take a look at it. Here's the dollar index. I believe we. I believe this dollar index is is uh, is uh, Marshall's telling us that that it's George Santana. Okay, Santana. Did he play for the Beatles? Was he one? Is he the guy that played the? No, that was George Harrison. Anyway, look, you see the ABCD pattern here in the uh, the U.S. dollar index. The key the key thing to keep, take away from this, folks, is the D point. You see the D point up there? Then go to the far left, and you see those two little boxes. One says 1.618, and the other says 1.618. That's why that was important. And what did we do last week? We went right up to that same number again. That's why it's that important. Above 99.40. The euro is going to be in the toilet, but uh, until that happens, the euro is holding its own. It's really trying to get some type of a rally in here, and it could be a rally that could last, uh, you know, uh, who knows, uh, three, four months, three, four weeks. We don't know. All I know is that when you get down to that point here, you don't know what's going to happen next, so the only thing you can do is focus on how much you're going to have to risk. That's the whole key to this is find out what you have to risk. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have a caller on the line. Mr. Z, are you there? I am, sir. Um, thanks for taking the call. Not a problem, John. You were lucky to squeeze in. There were 12 ahead of you. You just barely made it. <laughs> yeah, what well, can I, I do? Uh... I uh, I made a payment uh, to oh, producer Al. Oh yeah, so, uh, Al's, Al's notorious for that. <laughs> <laughs> Got our bases oh. covered, Larry. Yeah. Listen, what can I do for you, my friend? A uh, couple of things. Um, start off with the Dow and S and P. Um, two questions. First, that short squeeze into Friday's closing high on the S and P up to twenty nine fifty two. Mm -hmm. uh, can you envision that being the end of a short squeeze bounce? Yes, John, I thought that that was an ABCD pattern that was completed. I focused on that. In fact, I think I probably still saved it, I believe. Let's just get up here. Uh, I believe I did. Let me put, put it up here. In, yeah, here it is. We'll just get it right here, and I'll bring it up, and you'll be able to see it. This is what I think was happening, and uh, you'll you'll see that. So I thought I had two options. He was going to scream up to the upside, which it still could, or that was nothing more than a short covering with the open interest dropping. Of course, that really confirms that it was short covering. So if open interest would have increased dramatically in that S&P on Friday, that would have been a sign that, uh, wow, it's probably going to go a lot higher. But right now, that was nothing more than one of those short covering rallies that we usually have. Okay, thanks very much uh, on that, sir. Uh, the follow-up is, and I know you study um, uh, the futures, the cash, and the options market. And very specific question. If uh, if I'm looking at uh, Friday options expirations, looking out the next uh, oh, eight weeks, I've got some expiration dates. Namely, I've just written them down and wanted to put these at you and ask you if you have one expiration date that jumps out at you as being preferred for whatever reason you think, and you don't have to say so if you. Uh, say why, but October 21st, November 1st, November 15th. Do any of those uh, jump out at you as being uh, candidates for options expiry dates you'd like to look at? 
Yeah, that October one I really like uh, for several reasons. One, that's the bottom of the market in, 2000, in uh, 1987. The bottom, you know, we had the crash on the 19th, and I believe it bottomed on the 20th or the 21st. So that's just historical. Uh, the fact is, you don't have to give up as much if you do that over the Novembers. But, John, in 87, you know, I did the October options, and they expired on the 16th, that Friday. You did the 16th. And, and, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> oh, what, hey, no. I, hey, I, hey, listen, John. I was happier as a pig in a in a, in a pig sty because you know the Dow was down 106 points and it was trading at 27 20 just around 27,000. That was a huge break. I mean that, that that those options that I had were and I I I put them on on October the second for two weeks. They made a lot of money and I was happy. However, you know if I'd have you know done the November option, it would have made uh, just about 50 times more. But I don't know if you could ever have gotten filled down there because the market was so illiquid. You know during that time. That you know it was really crazy, but uh, I like the October 21st because you don't have to give up too much premium, and uh, historically it's a pretty good day, and that would get that would mean we would be down if the high came in on the 25th like we think it did, or the 15th of July like we think it did, that would mean we'd be down five or six weeks. That's about all you get, and then we'll see. Yeah, that's right. You know, what, Got you very good on that. Thing. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, I might. Um uh, I might uh, turn back and ask, uh, or just discuss with you rather, the uh, new crop uh, corn and soybean futures. Um, yes. Both, both have rallied nicely last week uh, in reaction to that uh, Monday, September 30th stocks report. And this coming week there is a, um, uh, a crop report Thursday at noontime, and this is – this report, the USDA will give out revised uh, yield estimates. And, of course, mm -hmm. it's still an estimate, and harvest is just beginning. But I'm just wondering if you see the potential for this little corn pullback 393 down to 386 here as giving way to another rally phase, perhaps in conjunction with this uh, crop report come Thursday. Yes, I do, John. I'm uh, I'm looking at that very closely. You know, we got up to uh, 92 on the Christmas corn, and I think if you can get that down about 17 cents from the high, that would take it down about 377. Uh, that would be a pretty good spot to look at it because uh, I think these things are starting to you know begin to move. I don't think the China tariff thing means anything anymore at all, actually, because. You know, frankly, from what's going on in Hong Kong, China's got more problems than tariffs. I can tell you that right now. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting. But I do like the corn down about 15 cents. I think that would be a pretty good value. Right at a That'd be right at a 382, the whole move, too. So that's another reason why I would like it. Yeah, and uh, I'll just um, – uh, thanks on that. Um, I'll just uh, throw in a commentary. I went back and looked at the um, not just the monthly and the weekly charts, but uh, got access to some daily charts going back to that 1993. Uh, that was the year of that great Mississippi River flood in July of that year. And um, the corn price started taking off early in October that year, and we had lots of uh, lurches forward. Uh, that year on Monday, excuse me, on uh, Tuesday mornings. And that was, uh, of course, following Monday evening's uh, crop progress reports that come out weekly. And information came out week by week by week, you know, out of uh, harvest results in real time that, hey, the, uh, the corn yield, because of the uh, – the uh, excessive uh, flooding uh, not only washed away stuff in river deltas, but um, led to poor yields and in all sorts of uh, areas surrounding that area. So uh, I'll be watching that very closely for a replay. And uh, as I say, it's uh, now that we've got Globex trade in the grains that starts uh, 8 o'clock New York time every weeknight. Uh, I'll be watching uh, Monday nights, uh, each and every Monday night, uh, the next couple of weeks for clues of whether the same sort of thing is replaying here in 2019. Mm -hmm. Wow.
Well, I, uh, you know, this Globex has just been a, a, you know, a godsend for us, John. As you can remember back in the old days, you had to pick up a phone and get through to the brokers and had to wait and all that other stuff. And now you're just like a floor trader. You just press the button. You don't have to worry about out trades. You're paying only four or five bucks. I mean, it's it's just amazing that uh, what's happened in the evolution of these markets over the past uh, 35 years. Each day that I look at this, I said, my God, this is uh this is amazing. I remember in 83 when I first looked at these things before these desktop computers were really getting pop well they're getting popular I was watching the uh, uh, the you know, Bressert and uh, um, Bernstein and uh, the guy down in uh, New Orleans Tim uh, uh, and basically, when they were bringing these things out, I mean, it was just amazing how quickly it was going to work. We didn't have charts, you know, on these computers until it was 83. I mean, you couldn't even get an interday chart. Hey, John, thanks for calling in, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Larry. You bet. May God bless. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, 
Well, okay, folks, we also got notice from uh, Al that the uh, Edmund Burke around 1775 said, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. And my old gray matter, gray matter kicked in over the break, and I remember it was Napoleon Bonaparte that also said that. And I believe it's also in the, oh, it's not in the Art of War book. I don't believe so. I know that word. I know that book uh, by heart, but uh, I don't think it's in, the, well, I could be wrong, but, uh, and I'm wrong often, but but never in doubt. Okay, the one thing I wanted to bring to your attention, folks, is the uh, chart of the Treasury notes, and we'll get this up here to let you see it. If you'd like Harmony, uh, this is one of those that uh, came in relatively nicely. We made a slightly higher high at that 132.01 uh, on Sunday night uh, on the open, and then the market's been selling off just a tad. I mean, it's really nothing to, nothing to be afraid of, so we'll see. The only thing that would turn this market either way is a strong close to the upside today in stocks or a strong close on the downside. That would, and I mean more than 175 to 200 points down in the S&P, down 20 handles in the, uh, excuse me, down 150. 50 to 200 points in the Dow, 20 handles in the S&P, that would tell us that that was nothing more than a short covering rally. Whether that'll happen or not, you know, I'm not uh, quite sure. Remember, we're going to have Norm Winsky on on the 10th. That's the, uh, we got a nice little, uh, what do we got this full moon coming up here on the, uh, the 13th. Uh, folks, what's happening in Hong Kong is very, very bad. I mean, when, you, when they talk about protesters, these are not protesters, folks. These are terrorists. They're using firebombs. They're using little kids, three and four years old, as hostages. They're beating up cab drivers. They're beating up uh, bus drivers. They're, they've put burned down, believe it or not, they're burning down the stations where the MTR, the train stations are. Something that's just no graffiti, just absolutely beautiful place, and they're burning these down. Those are not protesters, folks. Those those are those are folks that are really doing damage. They're, they're terrorists. I don't know what's going to happen, but it certainly looks uh, very bad over there. So let's send some white light, huh? 877-927-6648. We'll see you on the flip side.